Welcome to the second part of Vector Math Masterclass. In the previous video, we discussed basic Vector Math functions. In this video, we'll be looking at rounding and repeating functions. Before we get into the math, let's go through some concepts that helps us to understand the math better. Understanding gradients as graphs. In Blender shading system, gradient is an interpolation between two values. We can also call this as a transition. Now, there are three ways to visualize a gradient. One is using its intensity or brightness, and another is using displacement, and the final way is using graphs. Brightness and intensity. To understand this better, let's look at the change in the brightness along the x-axis of the UV coordinates. The gradient along the x-axis starts from 0 and goes all the way up to 1 linearly. 0 is absolute black and 1 is white. Any values between 0 and 1 has a shade of grey. Whereas in object coordinate system, the values range from minus 1 to 1. And when we look at the x-axis, all the negative values are seen as black. So the numbers can be visualized as brightness of the color. The other way to visualize a gradient is using displacement. When we plug the gradient to the displacement node with the mid-level set to 0, we can see how the values are increasing from black to white linearly. Graphs are nothing but a cross-section of displacement. But basically, the x-axis of the graph is the input values of the function and the y-axis represents the output values of the function. So whenever the graph touches the x-axis, the intensity is 0 and the peaks of the graphs are the brightest values outputted by the function, and the values below the graph are negative. Let's get into the math. The first set of functions that we're going to look at are maximum and minimum. Maximum. It outputs the higher of two values. To see this better, let's consider two graphs. Let's say we have graph A and graph B. Let's look at this range. Here, graph B is lower than graph A. So graph A is maximum in this region. So it shows up in the output. Now in this range, graph A is lower than graph B. So graph B shows in the output. This takes place in all three channels in the vector math node. Minimum. It outputs the lower of two values. Now take a second and think what minimum is doing graphically. So all the lower graphs will show up just like this. The floor function takes a number as input and outputs the greatest integer that is less than or equal to the number. For example, let's say 2.45. The greatest integer that is less than 2.45 is 2. We can also say floor rounds down the number. Graphically speaking, if the floor function takes a gradient that goes from 0 to 1, it rounds down the values to 0. And if it takes a gradient that ranges from 1 to 2, it rounds down the value to 1 and gives us only the pixelated output of the gradient. Whereas seal function takes a number as an input and outputs the least integer that is greater than or equal to the number, short for sealing. It just works the opposite to floor. Instead of rounding down, seal will round up. So in this example of 2.45, seal would give a result of 3. Any number consists of two parts, the integral part and the decimal part, which is also known as the fractional part. As we saw before, the floor and seal only gives us the integer part. Fraction on the other hand removes the integer part and only gives us the fractional part, which just means the part after the decimal point. So in the example 2.45, the integral part or the integer part is 2, and the decimal part or the fractional part is 0.45, as that's what comes after the decimal point. So when you look at the graph and the gradient, Fraction removes all the integer values and only gives you the decimal gradient that goes from 0 to 1. The gradient looks like a sawtooth pattern. This is why fraction comes in so useful for repeating uv squares. Because if we ignore the integers along the x and y direction in the linear gradient, we just end up with 0 to 0 0.999, which makes up our uv texture space. Now we can plug this to any image texture or procedural texture to tile them. We know that floor gives us the integers and fraction gives us the decimal values, which, when you add back, gives back the coordinate system. It's good to remember this. Floor plus fraction is equals to coordinates. We will be using this a lot in our texturing workflow. Let's look at an application. When you plug the floor coordinates to the white noise, we can get a random value per tile. These random values can be used to randomize attributes in each tile. For example, Let's add a vector rotate node to the fraction output. Now we can rotate it by a value. Instead of a constant value, 
If you plug this random value per tile, each tile will rotate randomly. To see this better, let's load an image texture. We can see that the image texture has been rotated randomly. We can separate the color channel of the white noise texture using a separate RGB node and get three different random values from a single white noise. Modular operation outputs a signed reminder when one number is divided by another. For example, when 5 is divided by 2, the reminder is 1. And when minus 5 is divided by 2, the reminder is minus 1. And it outputs 0 for all the multiples of the second input. When you look at it graphically, it basically repeats a linear gradient that starts from 0 and goes all the way up to the value in the second input along the positive x direction. But along the negative x direction, it goes down to the negative value of the second input because the reminders are negative. For example, along the x-axis, let's modulate it by a value of 0 0.4. Now, the gradient along the positive x-direction goes from 0 to 0 0.4 and wraps around at 0 and goes all the way up to 0 0.4 and so on. And along the negative direction, it goes from 0 to minus 0 0.4 and repeats itself. Snap. It is going to output the multiples of the input number in the second socket along the axis. For example, if we snap the input vector by 0 0.2, it's going to output from 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and so on. Let's take another example. Say we snap it by 0 0.3. Now it will output the multiples of 0 0.3 starting from 0 with a length of 0 0.3 units along the axis. With the same input values, modulo plus snap gives you back the input coordinates. Wrap. Wrap is also a function that repeats a range. It takes three inputs unlike the other repeating functions. They are input, minimum and maximum. Wraps let you to choose a range to repeat, which can be defined by a minimum and a maximum. For example, let's say the minimum is 0 0.3 and the maximum is 0 0.7. Now wrap starts from the minimum which is 0 0.3 and goes all the way up to 0 0.7 and wraps around and starts at 0 0.3 again. And this repeats forever. To summarize, maximum outputs the maximum of the two inputs, while minimum outputs the minimum of two inputs. Fraction, modulo and wrap lets you to repeat the coordinates, while floor and snap lets you to pixelate the coordinates. If you found this useful, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.